If you enjoy science fiction as a genre, then you've undoubtedly heard of the legendary Doctor Who. This BBC powerhouse has had a long run and is showing no signs of stopping. And honestly, as fans, we couldn't be happier. One of the best parts about this show is how many versatile creature designs we get to see on screen. From statues of angels that move when you're not looking to sentient Christmas trees, which would surely be quite the handful to defeat, every episode of the show brings a new threat to the plate. Over several seasons, we've met various species as we followed the Doctor journey. However, there is one species that simply won't stop returning, presenting the angry tin cans of Doctor Who, the Daleks. One of the most iconic villains in the Doctor Who series is the Dalek race. In today's video, we'll dive deep into the mechanics of Daleks and learn how these seemingly indestructible angry tin cans function, and hopefully we'll even find a way to destroy them. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means an awful lot. Thank you, let's begin. Who are the Daleks? Who created them? These killing machines keep coming back no matter how many times the doctor gets rid of them. They simply won't stay dead. But where did these things come from in the first place? Now, it's no secret that the TV series has been on the air since 1963. Over the past 60 years, there have been several different origin stories for these vicious, hate-filled machines. But fans love the Daleks, so a serial was produced focusing on just them. Aptly named Genesis of the Daleks, this series delved into the history and origin of Daleks, and you guessed it, it ain't pretty. A long, long time ago, there was a planet named Skaro. This planet was inhabited by two mostly humanoid species known as the Kalids and the Thals. These two species were at war with one another, and as wars tend to be, things were quite brutal. The planet was overturned and had become completely inhospitable. Surviving on Skaro was becoming tougher and tougher with each passing day. That's when a Kalid scientist known as Davros decided to figure out a way to bypass this impending extinction. Like Bear Grylls said, improvise, adapt, overcome. Davros decided to improvise the current state of being for the Kalids. He figured out that evolution would lead to adaptation to the hostile environment, and that would help the Kalids survive. Evolution usually takes a long time to occur naturally, and Davros didn't have that time. He was against the clock, so instead of waiting it out, he forced his fellow Kalids to go through vicious mutations. This mutation of the Kalids turned them into those octopus-like creatures we see inside the Dalek once the outer coverings are disposed of. Obviously, hopefully, when you turn a humanoid creature into an octopus, there's going to be questions and protests about such a practice. Davros, a man of quick action, dealt with all of that by simply killing anyone who questioned him. Soon enough, Davros had amassed his very own army of octopus creatures piloting indestructible killing machines. He sent them out into the cosmos to seize a planet for themselves by exterminating pretty much everyone they came across. Are they mechanized robots, or do they contain living bodies? When you first see the Daleks on screen, they seem to lack any more nuance than what meets the eye. The way Daleks act, it seems like they're just a bunch of sentient Roombas that can shoot lasers and hate practically everything and everyone who's not a Dalek. However, when you can finally get through the outer casing of the Dalek inside, you find a surprise. The surprise happens to be this green blob, which is very much alive. At first glance, it would seem like a deformed octopus with a single eye, but upon closer inspection, you'll see that sometimes the creature possesses two eyes. Due to one of the eyes being significantly bigger, there's a perception that they only have one. The early designs of this creature, the Dalek Mutant as it was called, had lizard-like claws, but in later appearances, it seems to just have tentacles, which if you think about it, makes sense in a way. Once the mutated Kalids go inside the exoskeleton, they can simply use tentacles to control the machine, and there's no longer a need for them to use their claws. Or at least that's how we personally made sense of this particular change in their character design. These Living organisms are very much hostile and can easily kill someone whenever push comes to shove. Davros's forced evolution turned the once humanoid Kalids into these green blobs which look like regurgitated squid meals. It's kind of sad when you think about it. Dalek Exoskeleton Fortress or Flesh Prison Deciphering the Secrets of the Dalek Casing I know that I refer to Daleks as angry tin cans and Roombas already, but let's be honest, when you see a Dalek on screen, you have to see the similarity between its morphology and that of a pepper shaker. The shape of the exterior casing is very much like that, but it's not made of glass, ceramic, or tin. It's made of Dalekanium and polycarbide, which explains how strong it is. Said exoskeleton is almost human-sized and has three sections. 
upper, middle, and lower. The upper section has all the fun stuff, that is, a manipulator arm and an eye stalk. It also has a gun stick, which the Daleks love to use. The whole machine kind of hovers over the floor, it doesn't have any wheels. This base section is known as the fender, and it's also why the best way to outrun a Dalek is by climbing some stairs. Now of course, sometimes the Daleks can figure out a way to overcome the obstacle known as stairs, but most of the time they're completely baffled. This human-sized pepper shaker also has partially embedded 56 spherical protrusions, which basically act as a self-destruct button for the Daleks. Now, this is what the exoskeleton looks like overall, but why was it made? There has to be a reason. When we look at the history that led to the creation of the Daleks, we see that there are two origin stories for this ruthless race. Remember when we said that the Thals and the Kalids had a fight? Yeah, well, there was a neutron bomb explosion, which made the entire planet inhospitable. So the Kalids had to get inside the war machines, which were effectively what this outer casing used to be. The war machines became a crutch that the Kalids used to survive the radiation and eventually eventually became dependent on them, which led to the Daleks as we know it. This is one of the theories regarding their origin. The other theory states that when Davros created his highly mutated Kalids, he designed a travel machine for octopus-esque organisms. The third generation of this travel machine, known as the Mark III travel machine, is what we now know as the Dalek casing with all the parts that we mentioned before. The Dalek mutant is usually found in the midsection of the exoskeleton. It is connected to this robotic travel machine with a psionic connection, making the whole thing a cyborg. When the whole casing was designed, the Kalids wanted to leave the body, but could not because of the radiation. However, over the years, the Kalids became dependent on the machines and became focused on their goal of world domination. This led to the travel machine becoming their very own customized prison. You would make a good Dalek. Can they talk? For me, one of the most memorable and terrifying memories of the Doctor Who series has to be the voice of the Daleks. There is something absolutely horrific about that robotic voice wanting to exterminate the Doctor and everyone else. But here's the thing, it is said that Dalek mutants don't have any vocal cords, and they depend entirely on the robotic casing to articulate and communicate. However, we've seen Dalek mutants have conversations in that typical robotic high-pitched voice even when they're not in the casing. Through the long run of the show, we've learned a few things about the Dalek speech. There there is a communication device fitted inside the casing. This device basically has a few selected phrases present in it, so there's no effective way for the person inside the casing to communicate with others outside the casing. Any concept of friendship or self-identification was effectively erased by this communication device. If you wanted to say, I am different from you, the communication device would turn it into exterminate. But this was not the case for every Dalek in history. The very first Daleks were able to communicate about friendship, mercy, and other emotions quite well. But when you're planning a hostile takeover all over the universe, it would be better to make your soldiers into mindless, loyal robots, which is exactly what Davros achieved by using communication devices. When it came to Dalek Khan, we saw him talk in an uncanny voice, with emotions and feelings, and even muster up a laugh at one point. This definitely makes us feel like the communication device and shortened speech pattern were made specifically for lower-ranking Daleks, and not the higher-ranking ones, as a power move. What is the power source of Dalek? The Doctor has had quite a few run-ins with these killer cyborgs, and over the years, the source of their power has changed quite a few times. The Dalek city on Skaro had metal platings. Static electricity, which the Daleks used to power themselves, was passed through these platings. This obviously meant that if you could isolate a Dalek to a place where the floor was non-conductive, the casing would eventually run out of power and stop in its tracks. This was obviously not quite travel-friendly for a machine that was named the Travel Machine. So, the Dalek casings went through an upgrade. They got discs attached to the casing which allowed them to receive power. These discs weren't exactly user-friendly, and to make movement for the Daleks easier, they were replaced with rectangular slats in the midsection of the casing. Now, for the longest time, it was assumed that either the Daleks got their power from static electricity or something along those lines. But this changed during the last Great Time War. During this, the Daleks had gone through an armor upgrade, and now they were able to obtain power by leeching the energy off of the time travel. And since we're talking about the Daleks' power source, I have to mention one interesting tidbit about them. Whenever we see that a Dalek has run out of power, its weaponry shuts down, yeah? But surprisingly, it's still able to talk and move. Now, given its cyborg nature, that shouldn't be the case, right? If the power has ran out, then it shouldn't be able to walk or talk either, right? The third Doctor pointed this out, and his theory was that Daleks are psychokinetic in nature. 
as in they don't move because they have a power source, they move because they think about moving. This would imply that psionic power is something that powers the Dalek as well, which makes the discovery of the Eighth Doctor rather scary. He found out about these humanized Daleks who had developed psychokinesis by meditation. As if the normal Daleks weren't scary enough, now we have psychokinetically powered Daleks who would for sure be able to exterminate us. Nice. You are the final remaining impurity. I am not impure. Dalek Life Support Investigating the Mechanisms of Dalek Survival Systems If a mutated living organism is living inside a machine, effectively making it a cyborg, there has to be some sort of a life support mechanism. Otherwise, it would be extremely difficult for living organisms to survive that process. When it comes to the Dalek, this Mark III travel machine actually has an inner casing where these creatures reside. This inner casing, which we get to see whenever the outer casing is destroyed, is the hub for the life support system as well as the battle hub. The mutated Daleks sits inside this casing and operates the outer shell according to its wish. Now, what happens when the inner casing gets damaged? Well, when that happens, there's a security measure that the Daleks deploy. These are floating eye-like structures known as the Dalek antibodies. Just like our antibodies deal with the foreign objects in our system, the Dalek antibodies checks the damaged inner casing for any and all foreign objects. If it finds one, then the Dalek antibody turns it into dust and then feeds that dust to the creature that resides within. That's because when the antibody turns that thread into dust, it actually turns it into a kind of protein powder, which acts as a nutritious base for the creature living inside. Another key thing that I have to mention here is that when it comes to Daleks, their hatred plays a key role in their survival. I mean, if the Daleks weren't this hateful, why would they design a method to literally kill and eat anything that threatens them? This hatred that exudes from every pore of this pepper shaker is because of a cortex vault present inside the Dalek. This vault locks away their emotions and kindness, which effectively turns them into the survival-crazed killing machine. So, I would say that while there is a mechanism that plays a role in supporting the Dalek life, the hatred that it plays is a bigger role in its survival. So, a Dalek is a hate-fueled extraterrestrial murderer. What are the weapons of the Dalek? Other than the gunstick that I mentioned previously, there are other weapons used by the Daleks. Well, technically, it's the Dalek itself. What I mean is that the casing of the Dalek, the exoskeleton, is a weapon in and of itself. As it's robotic in nature, it can definitely be upgraded. And with each upgrade, just like that, the Dalek becomes more powerful. Let's take a look back at the Dalek Movellan War. The Movellans, for those who don't know, were a race of androids who looked uncannily similar to humans. Now, the Daleks and Movellans got into a war. The Movellans had a power pack on them at all times. This was present on their belt, which, if removed, would shut down the Movellan. This was an advantage that the Daleks decided to use. So, in order to keep the upper hand in the war, the Daleks changed themselves into quasi-robotic creatures. They completely got rid of the organic matter present within them, which essentially gave them the freedom to keep the Movellans on their toes while not hurting themselves. After the war, the Daleks returned to the food that they were most accustomed to. But when the last Great Time War took place, things took a turn for the worse. Remember when I said that the Daleks figured out how to leech the energy away from other time travelers? Yes, I'm talking about the Time Lord Artron, who founded and used this energy. The Daleks used this energy to regenerate themselves. This practically made them invincible because no matter where the damage was, on the outer casing or the inner, the Dalek was able to heal itself and keep moving forward. To refine this process, Davros conducted an experiment where he siphoned huge amounts of the regeneration energy, also known as the Time Lord energy, and gave it to each of the Daleks present on the planet Scaro. The Daleks claimed themselves to be stronger than before, marking the experiment as a success. We have mutated to survive. You are impure. Can they reproduce? To achieve their goal of world domination, the Daleks have to have high numbers. This begs the question about their reproductive abilities. As the BBC show was for all ages, this was not a topic that was discussed in excruciating detail, but we can speculate a few things from what we know. Given that the Kalids now look like octopi, chances are their reproduction method would also be similar to that of octopi on a physiological basis. However, as they became this way as a result of forcible evolution, because Davros thought that this was their ultimate form, the only way they could be created exactly this way would be in a controlled environment. This is confirmed in The Power of Daleks, where we see that a line of Daleks can be formed just by one Dalek using their DNA. Once a new Dalek creature is formed from that DNA, they are put in the casing, and with enough electricity supply, you have a brand new murder Roomba in your hand.
are they vulnerable to viruses and disease? Given that the Daleks are cyborgs, there is a part of them that is extremely vulnerable to disease and virus. Obviously, that's their organic part. These mutated Kalids are extremely sensitive to the outside world. I mean, it's no secret that coming out of their casing is quite deadly for the Daleks. However, outside is not the only thing that they can succumb to. There are quite a few things that can knock the Dalek off their fender, so let's take a look at those. Do you remember those nature versus technology arguments that used to happen in school? One of the living proofs for the argument is how the Dalek reacts in the presence of the Varga plant. The Varga plant, which literally means devourer, was one of the plants native to the planet Skaro. These plants mostly look like a mixture of cacti and Venus flytraps. If a Varga plant injured you, at first you'd feel homicidal, and then as the Varga plant toxin made its way through your system, you'd slowly turn into a Varga plant yourself and join their ranks. Just like Superman had kryptonite from the planet Krypton, the Daleks have Varga plants from their planet Skaro. The Varga plant can stop the regenerative abilities of the Dalek, which will make it infinitely easier for anyone to destroy them in a weakened state. When the Dalek were at war with the Movellans, they turned themselves into a quasi-robotic state. They did this to prevent the Movellans from attacking their organic side. However, when the Daleks started returning to their roots after the war reached a stalemate, the Movellans learned about their organic nature. As Davros had previously attempted to spread a virus into the Movellan Empire, using a computer to shut all of them down, the Movellans were not going to let that go. They researched how to attack the organic Dalek mutants, and soon enough, they designed the Movellan virus. This virus immediately shot down the motor functions of the Daleks and resulted in the expulsion of a white, foamy substance from the vents of their outer casing. Eventually, the Dalek mutant was sealed in the casing, making its travel machine its untimely tomb. As you can already guess, this virus crippled the Dalek Empire significantly. The Daleks, at one point, had conquered Spiridon to figure out how the Spiridons had turned invisible. However, when one Dalek used the method, he died from light wave sickness. This sickness paralyzed each cell in the body of the mutated Dalek, thereby killing it. Using the light wave sickness, the Seventh Doctor saved Spiridon, which was overrun by the Daleks at the time. Do they have any other weaknesses? As one of the most iconic foes in the Hooniverse, the Dalek is quite invulnerable to most things. But that doesn't mean that the murderous hovercrafts don't have weaknesses that you can exploit to defeat them. Other than their bafflement by stairs, their eye stalk is rather infamous as the weakest part of their entire anatomy. If the eye stalk is covered or destroyed, the Dalek goes completely berserk, which gives you just enough of an upper hand to destroy the machine. The Eleventh Doctor used a gun stick and an eye stalk to make a device that would affect effectively blind a bunch of Daleks at one go for just this reason. So, how do you destroy or cover the eye stalk? Well, there's no need to worry because Daleks lack peripheral vision. This makes it super easy for you to sneak up on them and destroy the eye stalk like Ace famously beat up the tin robot with a baseball bat in the remembrance of the Dalek. Other than these and the viruses that we mentioned, the Daleks are also super vulnerable to cold temperatures. The shock resulting from a sudden drop in temperature leads to the death of the mutated Kalids. Do they die naturally? After the umpteenth return of the Daleks, you have to wonder if they ever actually die. Because it's really a marvel at how they just keep coming back. We've already discussed how easy it is to produce your very own line of Dalek with just metal, DNA, and static electricity. Now, the DNA of the Kalids was mutated to keep on living, no matter the condition. Even if the body was chopped up into pieces and locked away far from the casing, these blobs of hatred would keep on living. However, over time, these cells would age up and start decaying. The more it decayed, the more the Kalids turned from the greenish blobs into a brownish sludge. Once the Kalids can no longer drive their murder Roombas, they exit their casing and stay in the sewers of the Dalek cities. This is why the sewers of the Dalek cities are also called the graveyard in their language. Marvelous Verdict! Despite how ridiculous they look, Daleks are a formidable, relentless, unchallenged, and emotionless race with only one goal, to exterminate all that they deem threatening. Once they have wiped out one civilization or galaxy, they simply move on to the next. Their genocidal will keeps pushing them forward until new worlds are overrun by their kind. Being such iconic foes, we're excited to see what new upgrades our favorite murder pepper shakers come up with for the next time they face off against the Doctor. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one, be safe out there, and thanks for watching.